welcome to Broken Entertainment. Uh, so I took more of a break than I intended to. I actually didn't intend to take a break at all. Uh, but there's a lot of personal stuff going on that I'm not going to get into here. Um, it just wasn't in the right mindset to do a video, I'll put it that way. Uh, so, coming back to it, I've been playing around with this AI art program, and that's kind of the big um, to-do on the internet right now in the creative community is what what about these AI art programs, and I, I first got pulled into it, I was watching Chativersity, uh, specifically his Night's Watch channel, and he's talking about these AI art programs, and he's kind of showing it off, I'm like, that's interesting, um, because he's using it, saying, you know, I can't draw to a professional level, is what he was saying, um, but I would really like some concept sketches and the like taken to another level. So that's what he was using it for, and it, it, it looked great. And I said, you know, I'm kind of in the same boat, except that uh, he draws 100,000 times better than I do, and I'll show you some of my drawings. And now, keep in mind, these are done really, really fast, but I am legitimately this bad. Uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. But uh, I said, you know, I have always wanted concept sketches for my, uh, in the writing profession, you call it your lore bible. Uh, it's your world building notes. And it's just a... a way to kind of process it and it's a way you know you can reference back to it when you're describing it so you're consistent and so on and kind of see what somebody else might see uh, when you're describing it so I started going down this road and there's a whole bunch of programs out there there's I'm not gonna recommend one I use one actually on my phone uh, I, I don't use it on my computer and I've tried a lot of the ones that people suggest for the computer, and it just doesn't work for me. I don't, I don't know why. Um, most of the images seem like trash to me, and I've seen other people do it, and it works fine. So I don't know. Um, but I'm happy with the program I'm using, and the, it's come up with some great stuff. And the, the conversation around all this, of course, is, well, it, it's a couple of parts. The first part is... Is AI art going to replace human art? The answer, in my mind, is no. Yes, AI art can look great. Um, particularly if you really put a lot of time into it. Now, I want to bring up something. Um, let me bring up a picture here. So this, this is AI art generated. And all I did was say... Ruby Dragon as a prompt, and I got this. This is not at all what I'm looking for, but it is really neat um, and a little weird. And it's kind of the way AI art seems to go if you don't do a lot to it. But there's nothing... AI art's never going to have that same human soul, the same human creativity. Yes, it might come up with something fascinating, but it doesn't say anything. It doesn't have meaning. It's just a picture. It doesn't doesn't come from any passion, any particular interests. And of course, AI art. When we talk about AI now, we're not talking about legitimately artificial intelligence. We're talking about advanced programs that use algorithms. But this is a cool picture, you know. Um, I don't know what's going on with this eye. There's like a dragon head almost, and then the kind of melts. Like this dragon like melted under her face. Um, next time, don't light your dragon on fire if it's melty. Uh, <laughs> this dragon face is really cool. I love the gold. So anyway, um, I want to show you kind of what it does when left to its own devices, more or less. And the other reason I'm saying it, it it's not going to take over and replace artists. There's no impetus for... You can't set the program up and just say, Okay, art. You know, you have to tell it what you want. And increasing levels of detail, and sometimes using reference pictures, and changing around styles, and doing all sorts of things to get what you're really after. And the other thing is, 
part of this discussion uh, is IP because what they're doing with these programs is they're tapping into a huge online database of different images. And if you say, if if you say Ruby Dragon, I don't know why it generated a woman. Um, it just did, but that's fine. It it goes out there and it, it grabs different images of red uh, or ruby colored dragons, and it messes around with them. I don't know the full details, but it messes around with them. It uses them to create something. It doesn't mash them together and create something. It doesn't steal them outright and create something. But it definitely uses components. And I've heard different artists argue this, and a lot of them are saying, hey, that's stealing my work. But others are saying, you know, not really. It's essentially uh, copying a style. And that's what artists do, especially when they're first developing their skills, is they copy somebody else's style. They don't copy their work outright, but they copy their style. And um, I don't really know where I fall on that. I, I don't think we're going to have our answer to this argument for years. And I don't blame an artist for feeling one way or the other. I will say, as somebody who wants to support independent creators, including artists, um, I use this program internally. I use it for my lore books. I use it for my notes. When I go to publication, those images aren't going to appear anywhere. They're going to be mine. And if I were to say, and let me pull up, let's say I was going to use this, because I don't want to get into the other images just yet, but let's say I were going to use this. I would take this and give it to an artist and say, you know, this is what I was going for, uh, this is what I got right, this is what I got wrong, I'd really like to see your interpretation of this image, I will pay you and we'll put it into the book. Because this is the same level to me as a concept sketch. It's the beginning, it's not the end, right? It's you use it for writing purposes, for internal note purposes, but it's not for publication. So to me, uh, it's not going to keep me from paying an artist. Quite the contrary. And it's also not simple. It's not a push of a button, poof, you have exactly what you want. But... Let me show you a really good example of that. So I was looking, um, I was working on a superhero concept, and I have this superhero book planned for later down the road. And I'm going to explain this text down here at the bottom in a minute. But this is ultimately a concept that I settled on. I, I really like this image. I like everything about it. And I took days to get this picture. It started with a much more rudimentary image of uh, similar to what you're seeing here on the screen. Um, and from there, once I reached that rudimentary image, that took a full day. Once I reached that rudimentary image, it took another 20 plus iterations before I finally got this image. It's not a push a button and get an answer. And again, uh, it, this would be a concept sketch. Because I, I like it a lot, but I think a uh, human touch and you know, you want to support the artist. So if I were going to make this like a cover, I wouldn't. I would hire a book cover designer and say hey this is the book you know go through the usual process and also say this is a concept sketch of the character do what you want with it then we'll go from there not everybody's going to come out on that on that a lot of people are going to say hey i can make a cover for my book now and i can cut out that middleman that hurts book cover artists. It does. And some of them work for really cheap. 
Some of them are expensive. It depends on experience, quality, etc. But I understand the impulse on both sides. I do. So I'm really curious. Let me know in the comments what you think. Where do you fall on this? Uh, where do you fall as a writer? If you're a writer or an artist, where do you fall as a reader? Okay? Um, because I, I don't have an answer. I, all I can tell you is what I am doing, which is this is for my purposes only. And if I were to involve it at all in the publication process, it would be with a regular artist. A human artist, because there are things they can do, um, and they need support, and just as much, you know, all of us in the indie creative community are in this boat together, trying to make a change in our entertainment, and you can't do that by skirting around people, although, again, if you don't have the funds, you don't have the funds, and, and I'm not gonna hold it against somebody if they want to go this route. I know there are artists out there and writers out there who do, and I understand that as well. But for me, you know, um, I just don't have the answer in, in that regard. So I want to show you uh, some concept sketches for what I'm actually working out with. This is another Ruby Dragon. This had actually put rubies on it, which is really cool. Uh, love the dragon. So this is actually for... I'm not using this as an actual concept sketch, but I was working on this for my uh, fantasy novel that I'm working on, and I'm not going to explain why, but the ruby part is actually spot on. The rest of it is just kind of random, uh, although again, really cool dragon. So anyway, um, right now I'm working on a Vela story series, Kindle Vela story series. It's going to be published uh, hopefully in the coming months, you know, pretty soon, it'll be the first thing I publish. Um, I've got the science fantasy novel I've been working on for a long time. It's going through all the usual stuff, and it's got a long way to go. It's got to, you know, it's going through beta reading. It's got to go through developmental editing and all the et cetera, et cetera, and book cover design and so on and so forth. So it's still got a, a little ways to go, but it's much farther along than it's ever been. So I'm very happy with it. Um, but in the meantime, I'm working on these stories because I want to get some stuff out there. And this story called Agent follows somebody who is a villain in the book series. And it's not an apology to her for their villainy. Uh, the book, I th or the stories, I think, make very clear this person is not good. Uh, it's not the kind of villain where you're supposed to feel sorry for them. Uh, this is just what they are. But uh, I think they make an inter interesting protagonist in this particular story. So I wanted a concept sketch of the character in a specific... So they change um, appearances a lot throughout the story. And I wanted their default, not their natural state, but their default state, which is them in uniform. And I got more or less what I was aiming for. After like two days, you know, um, and this is the character Zai. Now, normally there would be big leathery black wings coming off this way, right? Um, but if you want to really, really struggle with an AI art generator, have it put wings on somebody. <laughs> I'm still working on coming up with that in a way that looks anywhere near good. But this got a lot of what I really wanted. It's got the sword. It's got the the uh, quote unquote leather uniform. It's not actually leather. It's shape shifting fibers, um, but it, the uniform's like spot on. The sword uh, a little thinner than described, but otherwise fine. And the, the big thing it did is these eyes. She has monochromatic black eyes because of eye implants. Um, and that took forever to get it to understand what I was talking about. <laughs> okay. And and it finally did. And, um, you know, there's you can see there's no eye structure at all. It's just black. So that is her. And I'm very happy with that one. And then I wanted, I'm like, you know, I want kind of a concept sketch of just 
eye implants in somebody's face. And that took a little bit of time, but I had some references to go with already, and I was able to get this one, which I'm pretty happy with as well. Uh, so what it is, is this species, at, at a certain age, they remove their biological eyes, they replace them with uh, electronics, and the or extraordinarily advanced electronics that link could directly into their brain, or, that they can command uh, just through almost subconscious thought. And these are self-repairing to do all kinds of cool stuff. If you're in the military, they do more cool stuff. If you are an agent like Zai, they do even more cool stuff. If you are in the medical field, they do cool medical stuff. Um, you know, that will be revealed <laughs> more in, in the actual writing. I don't want to dive into the full details of all of that. But very happy again. Um, I was actually going for a darker red, but I think this worked out pretty well. And I'm working on versions with different colors, but that's hard to get it to, to go. Um, so they can have these look basically like whatever single color they want. And <clears throat> the Asian ones, they can actually have them look like any number of biological eyes. And they'll actually show up on medical scans as biological uh, so they can infiltrate all kinds of fun stuff. Um, that one took a lot of... Both that and Zai took absolutely no physical sketches from me. Because I can't draw... But you know what I really can't draw? Is people. <laughs> Stick figures can't even really pull that off. For the same series. Um, for the sequel story to that... Uh, there's this alien species called Void Reapers, and that's not their actual name, but that's what everybody calls them because they're big, scary uh, guys that cause a lot of trouble. So the first thing I did is I said, you know what, I can draw ships. Not very well, <laughs> but I've been doing it, you know, I used to do it all the time, haven't done it recently. But I said, all right, I'm going to make it a sketch, and I'm going to see what I can do with it, and, and sit down, because you may not be ready for how bad this is um there it is there's my beautiful hand-drawn wonderful piece of art sitting on a single piece of paper uh with some highlight markers because i didn't have anything else available for uh bits of color because i wanted to see what I was going to do with the color uh, as you can see i can't even do straight lines and this up here is a, is a keyboard edge I that's important i'll show you why so, I ran that a whole bunch of times. Here is one of the ones that I rejected. And I actually think it's pretty cool. It just wasn't what I was going for. But look at what it's able to do for somebody like me, who wants a concept art, but is like looking at, at like their drawing ability like, holy crap. Um, this took it, and it really went somewhere with it that's pretty neat. Now, it's really bright. Um... I blame that on the yellow, but, and then, then, because it's all kinds of crazy, look what it did down here, it, it messed around with the, the shadow and turned it into something, and it turned this into, I don't know what that is, but that was the keyboard. That's kind of where the cool factor comes in, and then, I want to show you this down here. I have no idea what that is. Um, so that could be, you know, I said sometimes it takes. Let's see if we can. Yeah, I can't tell what that says. Um, sometimes it, it takes people's art and uses elements of it. And as part of the big argument, well, that could be a signature. I've actually seen a couple of signatures. Anyway, it doesn't copy the whole thing, but it does include elements, and that element might have been included. So, here's another reject from the same. And look at this. It did this whole scene up here of, like, this terrain and, like, there's a red sun and some other cool stuff going on. And I don't know what turned this into, like, a pen for some reason. Um, now we've got the shadows turned into a star field, which is great. Uh, kind of similar design here, but you got the yellow that's more legible and than, than the two cool pylons. Again, I like it. Just not what I was really going for. 
Um, so finally, look at this. So this is the same. This is the same image, okay? And it's turned the shadow into like there's some kind of ship in the background. Uh, this looks like a nebula, maybe a planet of some kind down there. And a whole star field up here. This, that's just a really neat element of what this is capable of doing. For somebody like me. And then, the, I think this turned out pretty well. Like, this is really bright right here, which is fine because that's a weapon. Um, so I've kept this as like a possibility. Maybe using it as one of their classes. Uh, this is the one that I have definitely chosen, and again, it, it keeps doing cool stuff. Uh, just like, this is like painted up here now. Um, so anyway, yeah, and that's, that let me get, now, this is, I consider this a rough image. It's a concept sketch. It's not as, uh, as complete as like this, but that's okay. So... Another thing I went, wanted, I said, I want a space station. And I wasn't really looking for a specific space station. I'm like, uh, I had some ideas in my head of like, okay, so I know there's some space stations that this species uses that look vaguely like this. And there's some space stations that this species uses that look kind of like this. So I took a another delightful sketch and I, hang on, that's not the actual sketch. Here we are. I did this. And I said, okay, well, if it did that with the other one, let's see what it does with black and red. And I was initially picturing the species that Zai belongs to. I was picturing kind of um, this is what their... It was actually meant to be a ship. And this isn't really what their ships look like because I can't draw for anything. And I, But I took the picture this way thinking it would flip it and it didn't, which is fine. And the first thing it gave me um, was this. I don't know if I'm going to use this. This this is just neat. Um, it just it took out everything else and it turned the two colors into something. Uh, and now it's just kind of weird and mysterious. So I kept it. And then, um... This is more of a, an actual kind of ship here. Uh, I think it did a great job of making it look like a ship, unlike mine. You know, I consider this basically a ship. It's just kind of hanging out. And then, eventually, I got this, and I said, yeah, I'm going to use that as a space station. Um, and it's got some facilities and repair bays and stuff around it. And this open bay here. And I said, yep, that I can use. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> I even know what it goes to. I'm not going to go into detail on that right now either. Um, so this is what these programs are capable of doing. They can do all kinds of different stuff. You can give them prompts. You can give them... Uh, Reference images, which is what that was. And I, so then I'm like, okay, if it does that with a picture, what's it do if I take a picture of a thing? So I took a picture of a thing. This is part of a monster base for Warhammer Fantasy. And it gave me this badass space station right here. And that, you can guarantee I kept. <laughs> um, but these programs are really cool, uh, particularly if you want concept sketches and art that you're not capable of producing yourself. Um, but they're also very, you know, is this stealing art? Is this turning art into something mechanical? Is And there's AI writers, too. Uh, they're much worse. <laughs> Hilarious, but much worse. But the thing to remember is that AI programs can never replace the human element. And uh, humans have this tendency, too, of not liking things that are too 
mechanically perfect. Uh, especially when it comes to stories and art and so on. Uh, so it, it just, I don't think that's a danger. But there's a very, that very real question is it's stealing. Are these programs IP theft? I think that is a conversation that's going to take years. And there might have to be laws passed. I don't know. You know, um, it, it really skirts the edges sometimes. Sometimes not. And sometimes, boy, you know, I like I said, I've seen signatures. And that doesn't sit right with me. And I would never use, you know, um, like this one. Gonna zoom in uncomfortably here. Uh, that's from something else, from the original image that was used. That's not a. You know, if I accepted one that had uh, a signature, I would change. I I would essentially never publish it. Um, but where do people sit? I don't know. What do you think of all this? Um, I think it's an open conversation. I think uh, people should avoid getting angry because I've seen a lot of anger related to this, and it's it's a legitimate conversation. I've sat and listened to Night's Watch talk about it, and they had actual comic book artists on there uh, who have worked for the big companies, uh, and they didn't agree either. Some of them thought it was a great tool. Some of them thought it was horrible so I don't know uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below uh, as for me I'm gonna keep using it for concept art and not anything else anything published is getting I assure you if you see my published work and there are images of any kind be they cover art or whatever uh, somebody got paid to do that that's how that's gonna work with Broken Entertainment. So let me know what you think of all this in the comments. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Hit the bell for notifications. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up, and I will see you next time.